You know, painting's always fun because it's calming and the kids are really quiet while they're painting, which is so nice. Hey class, Mr. G here. Today we're gonna to be going over mandalas, kind of the ins and outs of what you guys need to know, why we teach it, and what you guys are gonna learn from it. Hey class, welcome back. So today we're gonna to be learning about how we work with mandalas. The reason that we start working on this, Let's pull up a couple standards here. So some of the standards that we go over when we're studying mandalas, one of those key things, anchor standard number one. So for this standard, we're setting over the creation of artwork. Why do we create artwork? How do we create artwork? And what's the journalized purpose behind that? So let's talk about mandalas for a quick second. So for mandalas, what you guys need to know is it is, here, let's just do. So for mandalas, what you guys are studying and what you guys are acknowledging, what you guys know stuff about is how things are balanced. How's an artwork balanced? How is there something that is on one side and on the other, how do they equal each other out? Top, bottom, side to side, diagonally. But how these things match up, how these things work with each other. Now with this standard, a lot of things go back to the basics of art. So what are we teaching you guys in art class? We're learning about elements and principles of art. Those are those basic fundamental building blocks of the art realm. So things that we gotta study, line, color, movement, balance. Yes, I could put pattern in here. There's a lot of patterns because you're repeating a lot of stuff, which also goes towards rhythm. And you're also having to deal with proportion because there's some things on the inside that are bigger on the outside and bigger on the inside. Doctor Who reference. If you don't know about it, check it out. When it comes to making mandalas, you you're dealing a lot with those foundation principles. So let's start off with line. You're starting off with how you're setting line down in the overall image. As you're making the image and you're as you're creating things out, you're putting down those lines in a very balanced way. And the reason we're saying that adding this in a balanced way is so that as you're adding those lines on one side, you're having the balance, the same symmetrical design on the other side. Because a mandala at the basic core element of it is single eyes, centralized point, and it doesn't have to be one point, it could be multiple things, but it's centralized in the middle of the image. And then everything radiates out from that, AKA the Big Bang. Our whole universe was in a hot dense state. And I use that example because it's something that's fundamentally understandable to a lot of people. Things start in the center, radiates outwards like a flower. As those petals start to blossom, start to bloom and pull apart from the overall flower, you start to see more design, more repetition of how the line moves around the interior of the flower, how these things work in, co in collaboration with each other, how there's a balance that's being shown through the overall image. Those are those things that I'm trying to convey to my students as well as you guys too. After you have line down, you have balance of that, you're having movement and color. And I'm trying to pair the element and a principle together. So line and balance, element, principle, and then color and movement, your element and your principle, how those things work together. So for color, when we're looking at a mandala, we're looking at how that color radiates out from that centralized point. So how is color moving around the overall image? It moves. As the color moves away from that centralized point, are you radiating the colors in a light to dark manner? Is it going from dark to light? Is it going from complementary tones to, to neutrals? I mean, how are you gonna balance these colors out? These are things I want you guys to think about as you're creating your piece. For this, you're gonna need some basic tools. Basic tools for me for this project are nice big old sheet of paper. This is 24 inches wide and it's about 48 inches long. No, if that's 40, 40 inches long. So when we're using this in class, we're gonna cut it down. Now the pieces that my students are working on, it's 18 by 18 inch square. From that, you're going to create your centralized point from there. So using a ruler, measuring that centralized point from the center radiating outwards like any mandala starts out. All of your pieces do not have to have one single point. They do need to be centralized. They need to be as close to the center as possible. So that as it radiates outwards, it's a balanced image in the middle of the page. As you're creating that, if you wanna start off with more than one point in the center, that's fine. I encourage you to do that. Why? Because it's interesting. And interesting, it makes an art piece a lot more fun to work with. After you have your paper, ruler, another couple things that work really well. You know, I shouldn't have to say you need a pencil for this, but you, you, you need a pencil for this. Also a protractor because this is a handy dandy tool for making circles and also knowing your congruent lines, your lines of angle. Teach tip. This is a fun collaboration project to do with art and math because you're using a lot of math in the creation of this. It's just really colorful math, it's so cool. Now, once you have your lines drawn out, you're gonna need a Sharpie to go over the lines. We're gonna be using watercolor. Now, if you don't wanna use watercolor, you wanna use markers, perfectly fine with that. Crayons, it can still work. My only thing with crayons and when using crayons is make sure that you color really hard so that 
that color is really saturated in the image. Those that have experience with using crayons, you press really hard, it makes that little wax cake on the top of the page. Make sure that you're blending those colors together. Color pencils also work, big fan of color pencils. And I've done that with this, uh, done that with this with color pencils in the past. Comes out really beautiful. Uh, watercolor is just a fun, another level of experimentation so the kids can get a fluidity of color into their image. Okay, so we got a quick tutorial on the, the one that I made here. Fed up so it's not gonna take the hour that it took me to make. So check out these, this quick tutorial.
Awesome guys, I hope that you got something wonderful out of this class today as always. Uh, wonderful piece, a wonderful mandala piece of artwork. And also let's not forget to take care of our homework. Don't forget the homework, which is like, subscribe, share, all the various platforms, get the message out there. And as always, if you have a question, comment, concern, raise your hand down in the comments below. Happy to answer those questions from my classmates. As always, I will see you guys next class. Until then, later guys.